In chapter 14, caught in the crossing fire, Orba jumps on the opportunity to attack the unsuspecting barbarian while her reinforcements, Graven and Sephira, arrive on horseback. And he roars at you. Interesting. Cowardly, lowland scum! Oh, help! <laughs> they finish off the barbarian before he's able to destroy a valuable item he had kept tied around his neck, a whistle engraved with an unidentified necromancy symbol. It, it looks like it could be either some kind of a signaling device or... Maybe it could be connected to some kind of magic. Maybe if it were destroyed or if this whistle were used, it would summon an army of the dead. I don't know. Our friends press on, but it's not long before a dozen chilling spirits surround the carriage and Sephira, with fingers crossed, blows through the whistle, hoping to deter them. It pushes them back. Ride, keep blowing the whistle. Keep it pushes the them back. They were trying to destroy it so we couldn't get through this part. <gasps> The whistle keeps the ghosts at bay as our friends ride on. The anticipation of reaching the crossing is amplified by a massive explosion on the route ahead, and with eyes on a half-destroyed crossing, our friends leap out of the carriage to investigate. I'm telling you, I don't think it was either side. I think someone did this from an external force. That's possible, yes. Hopefully it was Jillian. What they find is a sea of bodies amongst rubble and one lone survivor able to relay what has occurred before he passes. He was worried that the, that the rebels might attempt to take over. So he, he planted... 20 barrels of necrocilium in a chamber underneath the bridge. And when the war ended, it was easier to just seal off the chamber than it was to, to transport the explosives. Who set it off, friend? I don't know. Are there any other survivors? One or two fled into the guard tower. In the hopes that one of the people the survivor witnessed go up the guard tower is Jillian, the gang heads up the stairs to save the unidentified retreaters from a ghastly bone snake. I suggest that Whoever is the strongest, given that it is a staircase, should be in front. I guess you're insinuating I go first? No, I'm actually insinuating that she should go first. I'll be right behind you. I'll do it. You're also very good at making noise, so... Orb is knocked unconscious by a passing projectile, but our friends manage to both resuscitate her as well as kill the beast. Sephira takes a moment to scorn Orba's recklessness. Orba, huh? you do not... Ever run into combat like that again? Don't ever get within striking distance. If you don't need to, you nearly died. I'm uh. sorry if my actions appeared ungrateful. I'm sorry. As our friends cautiously enter the room where the presumed escapers hide, a hand reaches out from behind a box and grabs Bizarre by the neck, while the other hand draws a dagger. Sort of covered in soot and some of the debris, you see the face of Jillian. No! <laughs> and she's holding a knife, and for a second, she looks at you. And then it looks like she recognizes you, and that's mm -hmm. what we're gonna call it. <laughs> Did Jillian set off the necrocilium? Will Orba be disciplined further for her blatant disregard for her own safety? How many questions will our friends be able to ask Jillian before a fight breaks out amongst them? Find out next time on Tabletop Notch.